Remember that at the moment the cartridge was fired, gas pressure of 50,000 pounds per square inch expanded the brass cartridge case tight against the chamber walls. It also forced the head of the cartridge case against the face of the bolt. To pry the cartridge loose, the slow twisting pull is required. It begins just before unlocking is completed. The corresponding radii of the locking lugs on the bolt and the locking recesses of the receiver, along with the rotation of the bolt, allow a slight rearward movement of the bolt. This rearward twisting action loosens the case in the chamber and causes slow initial extraction. When the bolt continues to the rear, following unlocking and extraction, the spent cartridge is ejected. This is the ejector in the face of the bolt. The ejector spring is compressed when the ejector is held flush against the face of the bolt. When a round is in the chamber and the bolt is locked, the head of the cartridge compresses the ejector spring. During extraction, the chamber wall holds the neck of the expended cartridge case in line with the bore. But when the neck of the cartridge case clears the chamber, the ejector spring is allowed to expand. The ejector forces the empty cartridge case to pivot about the extractor, ejecting it from the rifle. After the spent cartridge is ejected, the bolt continues to the rear over the rounds in the magazine. The rounds are under pressure by the follower. When the bolt begins its forward movement, the hammer is cocked and the cycle is then repeated. Feeding, chambering, locking, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, and cocking. The cycle of functioning we have demonstrated is the same whether firing is semi-automatic or full automatic. In semi-automatic fire, the trigger must be released each time before another round can be fired. In full automatic fire, cartridges are fired continuously as long as the trigger is held to the rear. Let's see how the mechanism of the rifle can be adjusted to fire either single shots or bursts. To see how the firing mechanism operates, we will use an oversized model. If the firing mechanism assembly were operating at normal speed, recoil would happen so fast that no rifleman firing single shots would have time to release the trigger in preparation for the next single shot. To overcome that, the sear is provided. The sear catches the hammer hooks even though the trigger is still being squeezed. When the trigger is released, the rear hammer hooks are released from the sear. And the front hammer hooks are engaged by the trigger lugs. The weapon is now cocked and ready to fire again when the trigger is squeezed. To achieve full automatic fire, there must be some way to trip the sear after the bolt is fully locked while the trigger is being held back. This is done by the selector, the sear release, and the connector assembly. The selector sets the mechanism for either semi-automatic or full automatic fire. When the selector is set in the full automatic position, the connector forces the sear release to trip the sear. In the last one-eighth of an inch of forward movement of the operating rod, the rifle will continue to fire automatically as long as the rifleman holds the trigger to the rear. 
When the trigger is released, the front hammer hooks are engaged by the trigger lugs on the next rearward movement of the hammer, and the weapon ceases firing. M14 rifles equipped for full automatic fire have a selector marked A. To fire full automatic, the rifleman turns the selector so that the letter A faces him. By pressing in on the selector and giving it half a turn so that the letter A is away from him, he sets it for semi-automatic fire. When turning the selector to semi-automatic, the movement of the selector rotates the sear release forward on an eccentric shaft approximately one-eighth of an inch so that it cannot trip the sear. It causes the connector assembly to move far enough forward so there is no contact between the operating rod and the hook of the connector assembly. This positions the sear release so it cannot contact the sear. At the discretion of the unit commander, the M14 rifle may be issued to troops either with the selector or with a selector lock like this one, which permits only semi-automatic fire. In summary, the M14 rifle fires the standard NATO 7.62 millimeter ammunition for small arms. It fires semi-automatic, one shot each time the trigger is squeezed. And it can also be set to fire full automatic, that is, delivering continuous fire as long as the trigger is held back and there are rounds in the magazine. The M14 rifle was developed to incorporate important features of these four battle-tested weapons and to replace them. The M14 has great firepower and versatility. It gives reduced weight, ease of logistical support, great reduction in training time, and most important, increased firepower for the individual rifleman.